Welcome to the Invested Dads podcast, simplifying financial topics so that you can take action and make your financial situation better, helping you to understand the current world of financial planning and investments. Here are your hosts, Josh Robb and Austin Wilson. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Invested Dads podcast, the podcast where we take you on a journey to better your financial future. Today, we're going to be bettering your financial future by talking about the most sexy sector of the stock market, and that is utilities. Yes. So let's let's 50,000 foot this right off the bat. So Josh, what is a utility stock? Yeah. Well, as you remember way back in the day, one of our early episodes, a stock is ownership in a company. So boom, when we're talking about be an utility owner, not a loaner. That's right. When talking about utility stocks, the utility sector is looking at companies that provide electric or gas use, and either for residential or commercial use. Um, but utilities, if you think about, it, if you own or rent your home, you pay a utility bill. You used to have electric. Oh, or I gas. pay them. That's what we're talking about. The companies that provide that gas or electricity. So that's where we're at. Utilities usually have some sort of steady and consistent stream of income because, again, they are providing a source of energy that is needed for people on an ongoing basis. More often than not, have a decent dividend yield because of that energy is a consistent cash flow for them. Um, And they tend to be on the more defensive end of the side. And we'll get a little more detail about some of that. So when it comes to utilities, I've heard the term regulated come up a lot. And I think that we should probably also talk about what that means. So regulated utilities, as as it relates to specifically publicly traded companies here, are these companies, since they are providing a necessary service for customers. So like it's necessary for warmth and life in many instances, like... It's just yeah. It's part of your. It's your part of air. life. Yes. Um, and because it's a necessity, the government feels that it they have some sort of responsibility to regulate these companies in this area of the market who provide these services to make sure that they're providing them at a reasonable prices and b that they can't price hike crazy. Yeah. So like if a utilities company, so specifically here in Finley, most of us probably have AEP American mm-hmm. Electric Power. If they want to have a rate increase, so you're paying X dollars per kilowatt hour or whatever, if they want to increase that, they have to go through a full approval process to get that rate increase approved because it's a regulated utility. Now, there are certain areas of the country and definitely certain areas of the world outside the U.S. with unregulated utilities, and those companies can essentially do whatever they want. That's not the case in most areas around here, so regulated utilities but it's that regulated area it's it's because those the the rates are regulated that those companies have such predictable yep. cash flows and revenues so let's dig into the benefits so benefits of owning utility stock like you had mentioned before these are steady stable companies predictable yep. right um they have great dividends and they can pay those great dividends because they have those recurring revenues that are very easy to forecast cuz there's not a lot of fluctuation there, and it's always in demand, right? And when you talk about regulated, part of the why there is that stability is there's not a lot of new companies starting up saying, hey, I'm a new utility, right? because the government is regulating it. it there are barriers to entry yes. to get into the Yeah, the utility companies that are around have been around for a little while, and they've merged and done whatever, yeah. but generally speaking... Everyone, you know, we've had power for over 100 years across the country. So that's kind of there. So that is one of the benefits of utility companies. Also, historically speaking, they have lower volatility. They're, like Josh mentioned, they're a bit more on the defensive end of stocks. That does not mean they have no volatility um, because they are stocks. They are publicly traded companies that you have an ownership in. And just like all of them, whether that be the mega cap tech companies or the defensive utility stocks, they are volatile, yeah. and you're getting compensated an additional return over a bond, essentially, mm-hmm. in the because of the risk that you're taking on, the risk that it could go down. Yep. And we saw utilities companies last spring, 2020, in March, they didn't go down as much as the market, but they still sold off. Yep. And that's typically how it works in terms of market volatility. Josh, talk a little bit about the risks. So flip side of that coin, 
the risks of owning utility stocks. Yeah. So if you think about what the utility companies are doing, they're providing that energy. So they got to create that energy through different sources. And so one of the risks is weather. So if they have an issue, and a good example of that would be Texas. Right. They had that cold front move through with some freeze, and that affected their utilities. Yeah. People were without power for a while because the utility companies weren't prepared. They were not that. ready. Another one, you know, just weather in general, super hot, right? Yeah. If, if there's a high demand for utility, they may not be able to keep up with the supply demand. And so then there may be rolling brownouts or blackouts mm-hmm. and those type of things. So that's one risk is if they have that problem, then the shareholders are going to have a problem exactly. um, with that. And then another one is when you look at stocks and you're investing and people usually think of growth when it comes to stocks they're kind of conservative Mm -hmm. when it comes to the stock market world. And so talk about this a little more. Interest rates play into how utilities do. Exactly, They are a little more affected by utility movement of price because of interest rates. Right. And so we'll talk about that. We will get into that, but that is a risk for investors when they think about that. And then you mentioned regulation. So when the government is involved, they could pass laws or change things or deny price increases, which would affect the future growth and dividend of a utility. And then on the other side, deregulation could impact competition and things like that. So there there are those utility risks as well. And then they have to create the energy. Oh, yeah. What do you make out of? From somewhere, there are some, you know, issues from a global warming standpoint, ESG, how they create that. Coal being a good example, you know, coal plants are not the most efficient when it comes to creating energy. Um, Nuclear on the other end, Mm -hmm. which is very efficient, but can have some side effects if it goes wrong. Right. So, you know, how they make it could be, um, at least you need to be aware of that as a utility stock owner. So let's dig a little bit into, I want to explain how, you know, treasury yield curve changes really are going to impact. Oh boy. Impact. It's going to get crazy. Utility stocks. Okay. So there's really two main sides of the picture here that we're talking about of how interest rates essentially mm-hmm. as we're talking about are impacting utility stocks so number one is that utilities and and reits also i'm going to lump those in there those are kind of known in the market and thought of as bond proxies so they're a little bit more safe they're a little bit less volatile not they're not totally safe and they're not totally not volatile but they're viewed as less mm-hmm risky and less volatile um so therefore they're likened to bonds another way that they're likened to bonds is the fact that they have as josh had mentioned higher dividend yields and higher dividend yields are you know that income is a function that you see in the fixed income market that's very sought after so as yields rise so the bond market is selling off right yields are rising so that makes bonds more attractive compared to these areas of the market like yeah. utilities and REITs because you can take even less risk and go buy a bond and get good yield. Yep. And since the bond prices are going down because rates are rising, you're buying them cheaper exactly. for a higher so yield. So that it's, a, it's yield. all about comparative yep. comparative valuations there. And that makes bonds increasingly attractive to utility stocks, what we're talking about here. The flip side of that also happens, right? So as rates fall, so bond prices are going up, mm-hmm. interest rates are coming down these areas. So as in utilities, REITs, the bond proxy areas of the market are going to become more attractive because, well, they have good yield. And you can get that yield that may be more than you can get with a bond, which especially in today's market is not hard to come by yes. because interest rates are really, really, really low. Super low. So that's one side. Mm -hmm. The other side of how yield affects utilities is interest burden. So these companies, these utilities companies, are often borrowing a lot of money to function. And that's not a bad business model. That's just how they operate. A lot of Mm -hmm. areas of the market actually run a lot on debt because they can take on debt very cheaply and turn it into profit, essentially. So as interest rates rise, the cost of this debt and the debt burden in terms of dollars, is going to increase as well because they're issuing new bonds. And bonds in the utility sector are very safe, generally speaking, yep. in terms of uh, credit rating. But that means that the dollars that they're going to be paying out in interest is going to be a lot higher. So there's a couple of factors as it relates to you, the interest rate environment and how that impacts utilities. But yeah, it does have a lot more of an impact than it does in other areas of the market. Yep. And like you said, you know, Utility companies, a lot of times, they're the ones responsible for building out the infrastructure. 
but they do so knowing that they'll be able to collect back that cost of that, but over time. So a lot of times they're issuing that debt to build off the infrastructure, and then the government says, yeah, we'll allow you to increase your costs to recoup that over time. But right. if they're issuing debt and debt's changed, you're right, it, it could could or could not be beneficial. So right. you're right. There's a lot to consider as a owner in the utility section. All right, let's take a break. I got a dad joke for oh, you. Oh, Josh, I've been waiting all week for this. Oh, man, this one's funny. You said it's good. I've not gotten a preview of it yet. So you think that a snail, which are notoriously slow. Oh, yeah. A snail would be faster if you remove its shell. Yeah. It's not true. They become sluggish. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so... You know a snail yeah. and a slug. I know, ah, Josh, of yeah, course I know what a snail is. Do you know slugs is? have internalized shells? No. Yeah. Weird. In, not exoskeleton, but, yeah, you know, apparently. skeleton. Yeah. And um, they're all part of the... Related to the slug family? Clam. Well, no, they're mollusks. Like... Like uh, clams and oysters. Well, and you eat, yeah, you eat yeah, snails. But I'm saying they're all part of the same family. It's just interesting. Crazy. So when we had that big flood, two th- the most recent one, yeah, I guess, whatever, let's yeah, specify which one. 2000 and maybe 17, yeah, I think. The big one. Um, we had we had just bought our house. Never had a big bunch of flood before. Anyway, we ended up getting a lot of water in the basement, as most people did at that point, and. <laughs> I remember going out. We had one of those. So we live in a very, very old house, and we have one of those basement exits that mm-hmm. comes out of the like, like you see on Twister. I think All the horror movies. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can get as for tornadoes or what? I don't know. But anyway, I had I was opening that thing up to um, Air it out. exit out yeah. the you know clean out the water and everything. There were like fifty slugs on out. those. Yeah. And once the water had kind of gone down, fifty slugs on the steps of my basement entrance and i don't know how they got there because they're not there when it's dry no they sneak in they just like came out of nowhere yeah, they follow they were a little sluggish but yeah, they came they, they were they took a little while to get there <laughs> okay so to recap what we we're talking about in utilities a couple things you get with utility stocks you get steady regulated business without surprises yep. that's pretty much what you get weather being the biggest wild card mm-hmm. you also get a nice dividend yield for example we had mentioned this um, that dividends are lucrative in utilities. Well, putting numbers to it, the S and P five hundred. So we're using the SPY ETF yields about one point two six percent dividend yield. Really low historically, yeah. but also that's the market in general one point two six percent. The XLU, which is the sector spider ETF, it yields two point nine one percent. Okay, so right. if you divide that, the difference is so one hundred and thirty one. The the XLU has 131% of the yield of the yeah, SPY. You're getting more than double. Yeah, you're yeah. getting more than double, which is a lot of yes. yield. Yeah. And it's even that's low historically for utilities because all of these stocks have gone up, but their prices have gone up faster than their dividends have over time, yeah. so the yields look a little bit lower. Yeah. But anyway, that is an example. Yeah, you are a lot. So that's, what, 2.3% more mm-hmm. yield lucrative. What you don't get, things we mentioned, you don't get fast growth. Slow and steady wins the race here. Pretty regulated, pretty slow and steady. You also probably, in most instances, don't get much innovation. Utilities, 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 utility. However, this has taken a bit of a change lately um, as utility companies have been pushing into renewable energy. And renewable energy is a kind of new frontier. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our country is moving towards increasing the percentage of our renewables and our total carbon footprint and all that stuff. So, Kind of a cool. We're getting yeah. some innovation yeah, in utilities. Wind, space. solar, mm-hmm. what, water. Well, yeah, hydro. hydro. Yep, exactly. And you probably, and we're going to talk about this in just a second. Don't want to expect exciting returns. Okay, you might do okay sometimes. Even you might. They're full of energy. They're full of energy. <laughs> so let's talk about returns. These. This is just price returns. This is not looking at total return. Okay. Total return is going to look a little bit better. It will not change the overall picture, however. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking as far back as I really can do to the latest month end we've got. So I'm looking for from 1231.98 to 730.21. 7.30 or 7.31? Uh, 7.30 was the last trading day of the oh, month. Oh, that's true. So yeah. Weekends. Exactly. Those, those weekends. So the S&P 500, as shown, I will be talking about the SPY, Spider SPY ETF. That has, re- that has returned 255.6% price return over that time. Really good return, right? The XLU, the same sector spider ETF over the same time frame, has returned 118.2%. That's a big difference. Yes. 
That's mm-hmm. well over double. Yes. Less, so yeah, half. Yeah, for the yeah, the S and P has returned well over double of mm-hmm. the XLU. Now let's close in in a little bit more and take out part of a bear market. Yep. And so we're looking at the twenty year trailing through July. The SPY up three hundred and nineteen point nine percent, and the XLU up one hundred and twenty five point five percent. Again, same story. Yep. More than double for the SPY. 15, bring in them in five years. 15-year trailing, SPY up 228.3%. The XLU up 94.1%. Wow. More than double. Yep. Bring in another five years. 10-year trailing, SPY up 287.5%. XLU up 962 That's about triple. Wow. Bring in another five years. The five-year trailing return. SPY up 102.7%, XLU up 34.7%. That's a third of the return. Yep. That's crazy. So, like I said, not super exciting returns. Now, what do you notice, though? All of those are positive, mm-hmm. and you get that yield on top of that, which if you're reinvesting into even the same security or something else as you can set it up to do, you're going to enhance your returns yeah. and you might be getting, so the, I'm sure that that yield started off at three or 4% for the XLU. Um, it's just trickled down over time. Yep. But the S and P has also had the same compounding effect. Yeah. So that the difference is pretty drastic. So Josh, you might ask me, Austin, I will ask you Austin. How, how, how do you invest? In I don't this know. Sector. Okay. I do know. You do. Know. There's a couple ways and we talk about this every time and we're going to preface this with saying, this is not a recommendation. These are just ways to invest. They're not saying go invest in these things. Yep. Talk to your advisor about that. Look at your individual financial situation. This is not a recommendation. But you can invest in the utilities sector of the market through stocks, ETFs, or mutual funds. These are some examples we'll talk about. So speaking of stocks, I took some big names that you may have heard of. The biggest stock by market cap in the um, utility sector is Next Era Energy, and that is actually one of the most renewable focused um, utilities in the country. That is one of them, ticker NEE. It's actually had a really good stock chart over the last handful of years, which is unusual for utilities. The next one is Duke Energy, D U K. Um, that's a pretty sizable utility as well. Another a couple that you may have heard of on top of that, Dominion Energy, ticker D, just D. That's it, one letter. You got one. And another one, the one that we have around here in terms of electric provider, is American Electric Power, ticker AEP. So though if you're going to get individual companies, that's one approach for it. Alternatively, you could look at buying the sector, essentially, right? So the ETFs are exchange-traded funds. And if you don't know the difference between a mutual fund and an ETF, we do have an episode about that. And we can link that in the show notes below. But the utilities sector spider ETF that we had been talking about comparing the S&P to, ticker XLU, that's one way to get dedicated utilities sector exposure, market cap weighted. A lot of these are going to be market cap weighted. Another one is the Vanguard Utilities ETF. VPU is the ticker on that one. The iShares Utilities ETF. IDU is the ticker on that one. There's a John Hancock Multi-Factor Utilities. JHMU is the ticker on that one. I think that that one's more of a factor-based, like a quant-based um, utilities ETF. And then the, if you want to step out of the United States and look at global utilities, the JXI ticker is the iShares Global Utilities ETF. So then flipping the page to mutual funds, mm-hmm. different than ETFs, like I said. Go listen if you want to hear more about what those are. Looking at mutual funds, there is a popular one I've heard of, Franklin Utilities Fund. The ticker, there's a couple different tickers, obviously, with share classes, but one of the tickers is FKUTX on that one. Um, The Fidelity Select Utilities Portfolio, that ticker is FSUTX. And then there's one called the Icon Utilities and Income Fund, and that ticker is ICTUX. So those last two buckets, ETFs and mutual funds, those are ways to hold utilities without having the risk of a single stock in your portfolio, yep. which some people really like. You also don't get the reward of a single stock in your portfolio if it does go your way. That's kind of the that's spreading your eggs in different baskets, right? And, and you mentioned there are some utilities that also issue bonds as well that you could invest in. True. Which is not owning the stock of that utility, but if you were looking for the debt side Correct. of the utility sector, that would be the other. And approach. there's actually also utility bond ETFs and mutual funds. 
So like I was okay. focusing on the equity side yep. here, but there are like you can buy individual bonds from these utility companies. You can buy utility bond ETFs, utility bond mutual funds. Okay. Exactly. I'm not going to dig it. There's a lot. There's so many different ETFs, mutual funds, but mm-hmm. yes, you can do that if you so choose. So Josh, the question then becomes, I can invest in utilities, right? But should I invest in utilities? Well, that's a good good question. And you know my answer to that. Well, I want you to start with what your answer. It always is. Okay. It depends. Like, but you probably already own some. That's probably yes. a yeah. good so point. Should you own it? It depends. Yeah. But most often, if you own U.S. stocks in some sort of fashion, there's probably a utility piece in there. So if you have an S&P 500 fund or any kind of right. diversified U.S. holding, there's probably some exposure to utilities in there. Yeah. Um, but if you don't have that, you know, it really just depends on what your goals are Absolutely. and what your risk tolerance is and what your objectives and how long you're going to be investing. Same, same with anything else. This sector, although it's unique in the different sectors, it's no different when it comes to the long-term planning is, does this give me the best chances to meet my goals? Absolutely. So yeah, depends on your situation. Talk to your advisor. Ask them Definitely. if, A, if you have some already in your baked yep. into your S&P 500 index fund or whatever, yep. or B, if you should add some. Mm-hmm. Kind of depends on the situation. So two things for me. Number one, it is not too late to enter our second half stock draft competition. Check the website posts that we made or our social media posts that we've made where it tells you all the details of how to do that. But it is not too late all the way through in the end of the year. So if you want to beat Josh and I at a second half, half stock draft. There's a good chance you could do that right now. Have some fun. It's a good time. 100,000 fake dollars are up available for investing. You don't get to keep anything at the end. Um, you get to keep your username and password that you created for next year. Yeah, to use next year. That's it. Number two, as always, check out our free gift to you, a brief list of eight principles of timeless investing. These are overarching investment themes meant to keep you on track to meet your long-term goals. We don't specifically talk about utilities. However, like we said, they may be a part of your financial picture already and you just don't know it. So check that out. It's free on our website. Josh, how can people help us grow this podcast? Yep. As always, make sure you're subscribed. That way, every Thursday, you get the most recent episode downloaded straight for your listening pleasure. Because we drop it like it's hot. We do drop it like it is very warm. But we also leave a review at the podcast place, whether it's Apple or wherever. That helps other people find us, and hopefully they'll be impacted as well and help their financial futures. If you have a question... Please shoot us an email at hello at the investeddads.com. Also, we'd love to hear your thoughts on future episodes. You know, we're kind of always tailoring this to what the needs are of our listeners. So if you have a question or a thought, shoot us an email. And then last but not least, if you know somebody who loves utilities, make sure you Most share this people. episode with them. All right. Well, until next Thursday, have a great week. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Invested Dads podcast. This episode has ended, but your journey towards a better financial future doesn't have to. Head over to theinvesteddads.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and we had a positive impact on your life, leave us a review. Click subscribe and don't miss the next episode. Josh Robb and Austin Wilson work for Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. All opinions expressed by Josh, Austin, or any podcast guest are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. Securities investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment plan or strategy will be successful.